If you've ever watched one of my videos, you probably know I like two things, Halo and Tank History. With the Master Chief Collection coming to PC this year, I thought I would go ahead and combine these two obsessions, and take a look at Halo's Scorpion tank from a more realistic perspective. The Scorpion definitely isn't the worst sci-fi tank I've ever seen, but that isn't to say that the Scorpion is really a sound design either. Obviously when you're designing a video game, what you're making has to look cool before it looks functional, and they definitely succeeded in making the Scorpion look cool. With that out of the way, let's get into it. First, let's look at the general information for the Scorpion. The Scorpion's official designation is the M808B main battle tank. It weighs 66 metric tons, has a top speed of 54 km per hour, has titanium ceramic armor, a 90mm smoothbore gun, and a single crew member. The Scorpion also has four individually moving sets of tracks. Let's take a look at what's wrong with the gun first. A 90mm gun is pretty small for a main battle tank. The last main battle tank to have a 90mm gun was the M48 Patton, which is a 1950s design. The 90mm for the Scorpion would make some sense if it was supposed to be a light tank, which would be plausible given that it can be deployed by air. But the Scorpion can't be a light tank because it has the title of main battle tank, and it weighs 66 metric tons. If you shave 40 tons off its weight, maybe that would make sense. But 90mm is still pretty small given that a lot of light vehicles nowadays have 105mm guns. Another problem is the fact that the gun fires armor-piercing high explosive. Not only did that ammunition go out of style in the 1950s, but it'd be highly inaccurate from a smoothbore gun, which kinda makes sense given the Scorpion's accuracy in Halo Combat Evolved. Though something odd about the round is mentioned in a voice line from Halo 3. Hey, how does 90 in World War II, Japan made a composite armor-piercing high explosive shell with tungsten in it in order to boost its armor-piercing capability, so it's a bit odd but still grounded in reality. A lot of people wonder why the Scorpion is supposedly firing armor-piercing high explosive shells, and I think I know the reasoning behind it. In-game, the Scorpion can efficiently kill infantry and tanks without switching ammo, so whatever round the Scorpion should canonically be firing needed to be capable of killing both tanks and infantry, hence armor-piercing high explosive. What they didn't realize, however, is that armor-piercing high explosive isn't actually all that explosive. I think they would have been much better off going with high explosive anti-tank, or heat shells, given that those actually have a very large explosive radius. Now let's talk about the tracks and suspension. The Scorpion's quad tracks are iconic, and actually not all that bad, at least not for the reasons that most people think. There's no real advantage or disadvantage to having four sets of tracks, except the little bit of space you lose in between them. The Scorpion's quad tracks are bad because they're independently hinged. So you have these huge tracks moving around a single hinge, which is bound to cause a ton of breakdowns, and probably inhibit the Scorpion's ability to cross trenches. Another thing about the tracks is that they're supported by a VVSS suspension system, which pretty much went out of style in 1943. Sure, it works for tanks that weigh about 30 metric tons, but when you're talking about something that weighs 66 metric tons, you're going to have some problems. Though it's cool to see that they're going back and looking at World War II era tanks instead of just whatever is the most modern. Now let's move on to the crew. The Scorpion is crewed by a single person, which seems like a really odd design choice to me. Not only does it make it harder, if not impossible, to do maintenance, but it also makes it harder to keep track of what's going on during combat, though the Scorpion probably has a lot of computers to help offset that. A really big issue is the hatch for the operator. Instead of a conventional hatch, the Scorpion has a giant metallic slab which opens vertically. I think you can probably see where this is going. If for whatever reason the electric systems on the Scorpion go out, the operator is basically entombed in the Scorpion. I don't think any normal human would be capable of lifting that hatch without mechanical assistance. Spartans would probably be fine, but I don't think it's very fair to the regular marines that have to operate them. Another issue is the fact that the engine is mounted in the back, underneath the turret, where the ammunition should go. There seems to be a lot of empty space in the front of the hull, so I'm not sure why they put the engine in the back. I think if you move the engine to the front, there would be much more room for ammunition stowage. And finally, we get to the armor. The Scorpion is apparently still using titanium ceramic armor, which is pretty much what we use today. I guess in 500 years, the UNSC still hasn't found anything better than ceramic armor. It's odd to me, because I think I remember reading one of the books that Spartans have this special ablative coating over their armor which disperses plasma. I think that would go pretty well for the UNSC's main battle tank. Now, I wasn't content to just sit back and criticize the Scorpion without seeing if I could do better, so I made a very rough mock-up of a fixed Scorpion tank. As you can see, the gun is significantly larger. 
Since it's 500 years in the future, you can say it's a railgun or a chemical gun or whatever you want. I also made it so that the Scorpion has two sets of tracks instead of four. I gave the operator a regular hatch and moved the engine to the front. I also extended the back a bit to improve ammunition capacity. 343 Industries actually made concept art similar to this when they were developing Halo 5, but I don't think that replacing the Scorpion's style to make it look more functional would actually be a good idea. The Scorpion's design is too iconic to change to make it look more functional. And that's pretty much where my criticism ends. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it does well, I might end up making this a series.